During the War of 1812, medicine was extremely primitive compared to our standards today. For example, there was no technology at all. The stethoscope wasn't even invented. Uh, there was no anesthetic, no attempt at hygiene. Disease was the major cause of death in soldiers, mostly because of crowded conditions, poor nutrition, poor sanitation. There was smallpox, you had all the, the diarrheas, the bloody fluxes, um, you had uh, malaria, you had food poisoning. Amoebic dysentery was known as the soldier's disease. It's caused uh, by very primitive sanitation uh, and uh, water that's not good, which gets into food which is not good. The number one killer was infection. It's estimated that as high as 40% of raw recruits died of infection. Whereas seasoned troops who developed a bit of immunity, only about 7% of those died. And infection control was an issue in terms of where they got safe drinking water from, where the latrines were situated to prevent contamination. But those things happened by chance and not by grand design. A typical field hospital would, would have the medicinals to treat a wide variety of problems. We'd produce our medicines from scratch. They'd be weighed out and compounded and rolled into pills or produce elixirs. Until the 1840s, there was uh, no advancement really other than some instrumentation and uh, uh, very little in medication. At the time of a battle, it's important to realize there'd be one surgeon and one assistant for uh, perhaps as many as a thousand soldiers. In general, there's a 20% chance of death after being hit by a musket ball. If injuries occurred in the head, in the chest, or in the abdomen, chance of death was almost certainly 100%. However, fortunately, most injuries occurred in the limbs. There was no formal triage, but people who could be saved tended to get treated earlier. They had no anesthesia. Uh, they did their operations with uh, strong arms and uh, uh, fast surgeons. If an amputation was going to be undertaken, the soldier would be brought after waiting perhaps hours, days, even weeks after a significant battle. If a soldier was injured below the elbow and the injury was such that there was a lot of bone damage and uh, torn up soft tissue, it would be life-saving to amputate the arm. And the reason for that is uh, infection would set in if you didn't do it and your death rate would be 100%. Uh, as it turns out, if you amputate below the elbow, you have literally an 85% chance of survival. So you've really increased this man's chance of, of living uh, if you amputate it. The state of medicine and the, uh, the damage that can be inflicted on these people is something I think that it's difficult for a modern individual to truly understand unless you have a grasp of the technology. Set! Both the military technology Fire! and the medical technology. The military technology is always gonna be ahead of the medical ability to repair things. It's surprising that the actual shapes of a lot of the instruments haven't changed in 200 years. A saw then is a saw now. Uh, a long amputation knife then is the same now. Two differences occur. One is that they're all stainless steel, surgical steel now, so they can be sterilized, which was something that was not done 200 years ago. Second of all, some of the instruments are motorized. Now the amputation was done without anesthesia and uh, the speed of the surgeon was uh, essential. And usually an arm was two minutes or uh, even less. As if you hadn't lost enough blood, they would often bleed you and then give you a vomitant and a diuretic. And if you survived the medical treatment, you were a strong man. Uh, 
amazing uh, stories. I mean, uh, uh, Surgeon William Horner uh, once uh, amputated a man's leg below the knee, was propped up calmly smoking a pipe through the whole operation.